Um, good morning, everyone. We're Team Estrella, and we're going to talk about our app called Estrella. So first of all, um, I'm the satellite operator at Space Flight Laboratory in U of T. And we, as a satellite operator, we would like to control where the satellite is pointing at in the space, of course. And the current satellite that I'm, I'm operating is um, have a telescope on board, and it is observing the stars in the space. And sometimes we are um, observing the multiple targets in orbit. For example, there's an Earth. And if the star is over there, then we are observing one of the stars there. And then once it is coming out of the view, then we can observe the other star on the other side of the space. So to, to do those multiple target observations, we have to change its orientation of the satellites. And that re um, those requirements for the change of uh, orientation will be based on uh, time and space independent coordinate system that satellite operators use, which is quaternion co uh, coordinate system. Um, that's all, all those math under behind this app. Um, so the main motivation of this app is we would like to see the transition path that the satellite is taking when it is pointing a new space, a uh, new region in the space. So. <laughs> Why do we care about the transition? First of all, um, we want to avoid the sunlight on the telescope because it can cause the sun damage on its image or the pixels. And also, we would like to estimate the angle or um, how long it will take to transit uh, in orbit from the first target to the second target. So for example, okay, this is the prototype of the satellite. It looks like this. It's this size. And if the first target is over there and the second target will be over there, then it will look from here to there. But if the first target is over there, from there, then it has to look over there. So we would like to see the transition path that it's taking. So to visualize the transition and communicate with um, other operators as well, we would like to have a physical object that, can, that we can model the satellite. For example, we are just looking at the screens on the software that, oh, like, okay, what if we transit this uh, satellite to the, there? Then the, op op the other operator will may not think what I'm thinking. But if we have actual physical prototype that is requiring to show us the transition, then if I ask, okay, what if we transit from here to there? Then he can visualize uh, what I'm actually thinking about it. So um, we model the satellite into the box which has, which has six sides. And the only side we care about is the one side that telescope is because it's going to observe the star in the space. And we came up with an idea that we, maybe we can um, model this into a phone because phone has its camera at the back, and, which is on one of the sides. So the satellite where the satellite pointing at will be where the phone is pointing at. And this, tell, this can tell us how the transition path the satellite will be taking uh, by this app. So, uh, so I'll be talking about the overall designs, basically what the app is trying to do. Um, basically, our first functionality is basically the app needs to understand where it is pointing in space. As Susan mentioned um, uh, just a few seconds ago, uh, the, op the satellite operator uses a specific coordinate systems. So in order for the first functionality, um, the phone need to understand where it is currently pointing to, and and basically understand the coordinate system. So in this function, in the demo <coughs> where Arjun will show in a few seconds, you will see see that the phone is reporting in real time the coordinates of where it is currently pointing to, and satellite operator can simply you know pick that options and they can simply read read the coordinates from there. The second functions, which is our main goal of this app, is basically it will guide users to the point where they wish the phone to be pointed to. So satellite operator will just simply have to enter the coordinates where they want the phone to be pointed to, and they will be guided to by a, a clue, a directional clue, and they will be pointed to, pointed to that area. So in terms of seeing the transition path, they simply have to enter the first, uh, the first coordinates that they are in right now in terms of the satellite and after that where they want the desired coordinate they want to go next so then they after that they will see the, the transition path 
For the third functionality, um, instead of having to go to a textbook looking up the coordinates where they want to point to, we provide them with a list of common star that satellite operator will use. And they simply just need to pick from that list and they will, they will be guided to that stars. So Arjun will demonstrate this right now. Uh, hello. So uh, like we have three functionalities. The first functionality that we have is uh, where the phone is currently pointing in space. <coughs> so if the user goes to current quaternion option, he gets an option to see where exactly his phone is pointing at right now with the coordinate system that we are using. And uh, we have given an option where he can select between another coordinate system uh, which is much more easier to understand. That is right ascension and declination. Uh, next one that we have is where user inputs uh, inputs values to uh, be able to navigate to a certain point in space or look at star. So let's first assume that the satellite is currently pointing at Polaris right now. So Ajin will be um, entering the coordinates of Polaris. This four number, as you can see here. So right now I entered the uh, values for Polestar. And then he will meet, see that there's a directional clue. And once he reached the destination, it will say yes. he reached the destination. So, uh, I, and I get a, uh, like a buzz that I reached the input. So now let's assume so that the transition now path from Pololis to Altair. So Arjun will enter Altair right now, which is just four coordinates. So the next functionality I'm going to show you is uh, where I can okay. select where I can select uh, stars from a list. So, like first again, I'm going to show you whole star. So that's whole star. Now I can go back and let's say I want to select Altair. So now instead of having to type the whole thing, you can simply just stop choose that the list. Entire. So I can see a transition path from there to there, how my phone moves. So that's how the satellite is supposed to move. And so for the second functionality, there's also like a correction for quaternions where if so you enter the wrong quaternion. Like if I enter wrong quaternion by mistake, then uh, we are doing a calculation what how the correct quaternion should be. And if it doesn't fit with the equation, it will throw an error. So, um, during the process, uh, when we're going through uh, making this app, we learn a few things. Like, we learn from our apper how to calculate uh, the coordinates of a star and locate a star. And, uh, like, the compass was a big uh, concern because of the accuracy. So, we need to implement some sort of calibration method. And right now, we are using OpenGL for graphics, but we need want to use some better graphic in there. So the, our future work will be to basically add some augmented reality. So instead of seeing just a camera feed, we might want to add some stars that surrounded that area. So the operator can see like what star might be in that area. We want to implement a cloud database. So right now the database is all in the phone. We want to, want to implement a cloud database that can be updated by the admin and then we can keep updating the number of stars until, well, you, until forever. And then for the fourth one, for the third one, we'll, we'll be implementing different coordinate system. And believe it or not, there's a lot more co other coordinate system that people use for tracking the stars. Um, and then the fourth one is basically instead of just looking from the list, we want to do a search of the name of, based on the name of the star or just the the the, co uh, the uh, coordinates of the star. Thank you so much.
talked about uh, in the future implementing uh, augmented reality. So I see, I've seen that some of the uh, star tracking uh, uh, apps have this on horizon, so they display the horizon. Maybe you could, have, did you think about implementing that as well? Uh, yeah, we were thinking about that too, yes. But I guess our idea is for satellite operators, it doesn't matter where the horizon is because we want, we just need to know where the star is, right? Because it's basically up into space. The phone is a, represents the, the movement the satellite's going to make. But you're here on Earth moving this phone and the satellite is way up there. Is it, does it actually follow the same motion? To a yes. scale. What's that? To a scale, not exactly, but to a scale. <laughs> the answer is yes. Okay. Great, thank you.